Hello and thank you for listening to The Chasm Show. Today we're going to talk about work, and I don't just mean what happens between 9 and 5. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Chasm Show. This is a podcast that helps you build a bridge over the chasm that lies between where you are and where you want to be. My name is Ethan Painter, and I'm an entrepreneur obsessed with helping people. My goal is to work with you to define the steps you need to take to pursue your dreams. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Chasm Show. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Ethan Painter, and I'm your host. I hope you are doing well today. I hope wherever you're at, if you are in your car driving or in your office about to start work, or maybe you are in the gym on a treadmill, wherever you're at, I hope you are doing great, and I hope your day is going super well right now. Today, I want to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and that topic is work. And when I say work, I'm not just talking about your job. Uh, I am talking about what you do every day that fulfills you, that uh, allows you to create things and put things out into the world and contribute to society. It can be so much more than just your nine to five. But today I want to talk about that and kind of talk about some different options for finding fulfillment in the work that you do, whether that is your day job or your side hustle, or if you are running a full-time business, whatever it might be. I want to talk about some options, Um, specifically if you're in a situation that you are not satisfied in right now, if you are not feeling fulfillment, I want to talk about the three options that you have for moving forward to try to find that fulfillment. But before I do that, I want to clarify something. I think a lot of people, when they hear people talking about finding fulfillment, doing what you love, you know, people quitting their job and just going off and doing what they love for a living. I think honestly, there's like a little bit of a negative vibe to that sometimes for certain people, because I think they view that as selfishness. Um, I think people think, wow, that guy's just throwing his safe, secure job away to go take pictures or to go become a blogger or, um, to run their business. Um, you know, it's just kind of selfish. They're just, they're only looking out for themselves. They're only chasing after their own desires. Now I can't speak for everyone and I am sure there are cases where that, that is happening. But when I talk about living a life of fulfillment, finding your purpose, pursuing your calling, I'm talking about something deeper than just chasing after what you want as an individual. I just happen to be a Christian and I know not everyone listening to this is, and that's totally fine, but I believe that I was created with certain gifts and abilities and a purpose within me. So my goal in life is to be constantly defining and refining that purpose and then aligning everything in my life with that. And it's not just because it's what I want to do, because honestly, sometimes my purpose makes me uncomfortable. My purpose makes me afraid. There are really difficult and even painful situations sometimes that I have to go through, but I feel that they are part of my purpose. They are part of who I am meant to be. And so that's what I am going to pursue. But in addition to that, when I am pursuing my purpose, it allows me to contribute to the world in a way that I cannot do when I'm not pursuing that purpose. When I am pursuing my purpose, I have more time to give to my family. I have more attention. I am able to be more present because I'm not as anxious and stressed out, typically, although that is something that I do struggle with on a regular occasion. But since I quit my job and took my business full time, it has been such an incredible shift for our family. It's given me the freedom to spend time with them when I want to spend time with them. It's given me the freedom to take a day off when we need to. It's given me the freedom to grab lunch with a friend who just is going through something really bad and needs some encouragement. And so it's just allowed me to contribute to people's lives, to help people in a way that I could not do before when I was not living my life in alignment with my purpose. So I just wanted to clarify that when I'm talking about purpose, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about running off, quitting your job, yelling at your boss, walking out the door and starting a business so you can buy a Lambo and a boat and 
be super wealthy. Not that any of those are bad things, but that's not where my focus is when I am talking about this. Okay, so now that I've clarified that, let's talk about purpose. How do you find your purpose? How do you find what you're meant to do in this life? This is one of the biggest things that people struggle with, and it's something I struggled with for a very, very long time, especially since I'm the kind of person, I don't know about you, but I have so many interests. I've always been interested in photography, filmmaking, writing, editing, creating websites and kind of compiling creative ideas to start things. So I have all of these interests and I have always, always struggled with what am I supposed to do with all of these? Am I supposed to choose one of these for the rest of my life and just pursue that? Am I supposed to somehow combine all of these? And here's where I need to put in a little plug for one of my friend's podcasts Um, My friend Jack Fussell, I've never actually met him in person, but I've talked with him online a lot and over the phone. And Jack runs a podcast called Onward Creatives. And it's a group of creative entrepreneurs who are trying to um, basically make a full-time income out of their creativity, whatever that might be. And when I started listening to his podcast, I found a ton of clarity on basically how to choose a a passion to pursue. And I also learned that you don't have to just choose one thing. Jack has this concept that he calls the thread. And he believes that every person, no matter what they've done in life, if you look back over the last 10 or 20 years, every single thing that you have done will typically have this common thread running through it. So even if they're super different, maybe you spent five years as a graphic designer and then spent five years as a, I don't even know, a cashier or whatever it might be. Even if they're not similar at all, Jack has a very good way of looking at your history and kind of seeing the common thread that is woven throughout everything that you've done. And he believes and he teaches that when you can define that thread, that's really what you should be pursuing. That's your purpose. That's your identity. And so in looking back through my life, Jack kind of helped me realize and define what that thread was. Like I said, I spent a lot of time with photography, filmmaking, web design, graphic design, all these different things. But what I realized is that in everything I was doing, I was using my gifts and abilities to help other people succeed. And that's really what makes me feel alive. And that's what I am trying to do in everything I do now. I've defined that as my purpose and it's constantly changing and shifting in small ways as I kind of work it and refine it. But that is what I've defined as what I want to pursue for the rest of my life. So a huge shout out to Jack for that because his podcast really, really helped me in an incredible way. But let's talk about you. What, what is your purpose? What are you supposed to be pursuing? There's so many options. Maybe you don't have any idea. You don't even have any hobbies or anything that you're really passionate about, but you know that you don't want to be in the situation you're in right now. I would say get out there and just find some hobbies, find some new friends, find some people who can maybe inspire new ideas for you. Um, I think it's just going to take some experimentation uh, to, to really find out what you are meant to do. But I have a feeling that a lot of you listening probably already have a good idea of what you would like to do. You have something that you want to take to the next level and possibly even turn it into a full-time income. So for those of you who are in that situation, I have three options for you. These three options are basically just the three different ways that you can combine your passion and making money because we all need to make money. Unfortunately, we have to pay our bills. We have to provide for our families, for those of us who have um, spouses and children. And so these are three options to combine those. Okay, so number one is you're doing what you love to make money. So it's your full-time income. Number two is you're doing something else for money so that you can do what you love. And number three, which is not a good option, is working a job you hate and not having time or energy at all to put into your passion. So those are the only three options that you have in life for combining your passion and making money. Now it's up to you to decide which one you want to do. And there's not necessarily a right answer. I think it depends on each person. Honestly, some people are completely content working a nine to five and there's nothing wrong with that. 
you can find your identity within a job working for someone else. If you really enjoy helping people, find a customer service job, find uh, a job where you can put those skills to use. But again, I have a feeling that most of the people listening to this podcast have something that they're pursuing. And so you're probably not going to be in that category. So then it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to turn your hobby into your full-time income. If you don't, then your next steps are pretty easy. As long as you have a job that is providing and paying your bills, you can just spend a couple hours each night or time on the weekends pursuing that passion and contributing in that way. I have a lot of friends who work full-time jobs and enjoy their jobs. And then on the weekends, they are wedding photographers or designers. And that works out really well for them, especially if they have families, because then they have that income that they can count on. They're not worrying about running a business necessarily. And they are still feeling fulfilled because they are putting their gifts and abilities to work. But for the rest of this podcast, I want to talk about doing what you love for money, turning it into a full-time income. And I want to talk about the limiting beliefs that typically hold people back. I think there's two big ones that most people think. And I thought a lot before I quit my job. The first one is I could never make enough money doing what I love. So many people think this, and I've heard this from a lot of different people. But do you realize the age that we live in with the internet, with all of the resources that we have with technology? There are literally people making millions of dollars each year on YouTube by smashing things in slow motion or by unboxing toys for kids to watch. You can make a full-time income doing just about anything nowadays if you are willing to put in the time and effort and consistency over a long period. So no matter how weird the thing is that you want to do, maybe you're an underwater basket weaver and you want to take it full-time, You can make it work with social media, with the internet, with the powerful tools that we have. You can make it work. The second biggest limiting belief that I hear is I don't have time. I'm already working 40 hours a week, 50, 60 hours a week. I have two kids. I have a wife. I have a husband. I can't afford any more time to put into anything. I used to think this too. I used to think that I was really busy and didn't have time. But then Gary Vaynerchuk is always the one who brought me back to reality by saying, listen, how many hours a week are you watching Netflix? How many hours a week are you on YouTube? How many hours a week are you at the bar hanging out with friends, spending too much money um, or going to fancy restaurants with your spouse? This is just an excuse to say that you don't have enough time. There's always time to put in one or two hours a night to build a business to pursue whatever it is that you want to pursue. Okay, so now you have no excuses. If you have a desire to take your passion full-time, to turn it into a full-time income, to make a business out of it, you have no excuses. It can be done with the right amount of hard work and patience. So get out there and start doing it. In the future, I want to go more in-depth on the specific steps that it takes to start a business and to grow a business. But for now, I want you to just be thinking about what it is that you want to do and whether or not you want it to be your full-time income or if it's just something that you want to do on the side to bring you fulfillment and to allow you to contribute to society. All right, so in summary, guys, in order to find out what your passion is, spend time doing things. Get some hobbies, make some new friends, figure out what makes you feel alive, what gives you energy, what makes you feel like it's something that you should be pursuing. When you find that, that's what you need to go after. Once you've defined that, you need to figure out whether or not you want to take it full time or if it's just going to be a side hustle. All right, guys, I hope this is helpful. I hope this gives you guys something to chew on over the next week before the next episode comes out. I am finally working on scheduling some interview episodes with people that I know in the area. And so those are going to be coming out in the next month. I'm extremely excited about that. Um, I have a lot of friends who are doing interesting things and putting really beautiful, creative work out into the world. And so I would love to share their experience and their knowledge with you guys. Until next week, keep pursuing what you love and what you're created to do. 
in order to live a life that is truly meaningful. I'll talk to you soon.